to the air, gone. You've traded the pomp and circumstance for mask and social distance. This situation is abnormal, but not insurmountable. It's made you stronger, unified, but it doesn't define you. Your hard work, the all-nighter, essay, cramming, that defines you. Your compassion for your friends, community, that defines you. The 77 different neighborhoods, the big shoulders, big ideas, big personalities, that defines you. Your passion to understand, to overcome, that, that's what defines you. We may not know your names now, but we will. One day, we will. Your names will be on street signs, classrooms, book covers, schools, the back of jerseys, and the front of uniforms. You are graduates of the class of 2020. You are proud. You make us proud. Because you are Chicago. What's up, everybody? Miguel Cervantes here, your friendly neighborhood, Alexander Hamilton. And I'd like to thank Mayor Lightfoot for inviting me to be here today. You know, when she called me and asked me if I'd like to host, I thought about it for a minute, and then I said, I am not throwing away my shot. I am not throwing away my shot. Hey, yo, I'm just like my country. I'm young, scrappy, and hungry, and I'm not throwing away my shot to celebrate the graduating class of 2020 in Chicago. Look, I know a lot of you hoped at the end of this year you'd be able to walk across a stage like this and celebrate with your family and your friends. And unfortunately, because of everything that's happening here in 2020, we don't get to do that. But thanks to Mayor Lightfoot, we're going to make up for it. The show we have lined up for you today is a complete celebration of you and the hard work you've put in over the last four years. 35,000 seniors will be graduating today, and you've all earned it. We got Common, we got Oprah, we got the Second City. Performances and speeches by your fellow graduates all are coming right up. I got my start on the stage just like this one, with dreams of being on Broadway, and I made it. But getting there was difficult, just like this school year has been difficult for all of you. I spent the last four years here in Chicago, and I consider it my home. So, being from Chicago, you all know that when things get hard, we rally and get stronger. And this year has been no different. I must 
basketball. I only played one game. My first game was my last game. I am hurt. You know, I'm like, I didn't get a chance, you know, to express that, you know, see my brothers and my siblings and my family, you know, see me go off. But I know I worked hard for every step that it took me to get to my senior year. And not just, you know, it wasn't no easy route. I would say I really miss my swim team and not being able to do the water polo. And also the graduation that I'm not gonna be able to go and celebrate. It hurts, to be honest. No senior trip, can't walk across the stage. My sister graduated high school from, um, last year. I still remember vividly um, thinking how I would walk across the same stage one year later, but everything has changed. I'll admit I was kind of a clock watcher in class. Um, sent through classes, always peeking at the clock, uh, seeing how much time is left, but I know if I ever got another opportunity to go to high school again, uh, I would save every second of it. You know, it just makes me appreciate every day that I did get to go to school a little bit more. I'm getting emotional about it, but yeah. yeah. If I knew this was gonna come up, I would I have appreciated it way more. When you go to school every day, you don't think you really want to be there, but when you don't have school, you realize how much you miss it and how much you miss the teachers, even if they're nagging you about an assignment or something. I ended up going to get ice cream with two of my friends, and we were like crying in the car because we were all um, really excited for our track season, which we knew it was going to be canceled. I would just say it was full of trials and tribulations, but everything worked out in the end. Now I'm getting accepted to schools I always wanted to go to. Despite all of the bad things that happened, we'll actually live through a moment that hasn't happened in history um, before. I think my class and my friends have all come together in a much bigger way than I would have imagined. We're all like talking to each other and like Zoom parties every other weekend and just making sure we stay in contact. All my friends and a lot of my grade, they've been doing senior spotlights on one of our Instagrams. You see where all my friends are going. I know this pandemic has been rough on us, but don't let that discourage you from being who you are and staying motivated. We haven't had the opportunity to participate in those larger events and the things that seniors really look forward to, but I'm really proud of the class of 2020 for continuing to just be positive about the situation, make the best of what we can. To the class of 2020, congratulations. We did it. We made it through this pandemic and we can go so much further. We just had to put our minds to it and we can do great things. class of 2020 this is governor jb pritzker and i know this isn't the graduation ceremony that you had in mind at the beginning of this year but because of the situation we find ourselves in you'll have some interesting stories to tell your children and grandchildren about that year you graduated when everyone stayed home though this might not have been exactly how you imagined crossing the high school finish line Please know that your accomplishments and the years of effort that brought you to this point have not been diminished, and instead, they've been strengthened. And the sacrifices you've made in just the last few months have not gone unnoticed. I want to thank you for doing your tremendous part to keep our community safe by social distancing, even on your big day. I know that this time of crisis has been challenging for all of you in so many unexpected ways. But you are truly special. You've demonstrated resiliency, resolve, and perseverance in the face of incredible adversity. You've proven that you're prepared to take on the world no matter what it throws at you. That's what this nation and this state need, leaders like you who know how to overcome challenges and find a path to success. That's who you are. That's who the class of 2020 is. As your governor, I want you to know how deeply proud I am of you. And on behalf of all of the people of Illinois, congratulations.
go to Dunbar Mighty Marching Music Machine. Five, six, five, six, seven, three. class of 2020. Our year was treading water near Oak Street Beach, every crashing wave of teal turning our heads to buoys, one after another like the cunning brew of the lake before a storm. And yet, we stayed afloat, breathing without trouble, calling to our peers, because we are resilient. In summer's end, seeing friends for the first time was the thing that we looked forward to the most. Whether it was riding the CTA to school, walking a couple blocks from home, or catching a ride just in time to see the sunrise over the city skyline, we were persistent. We were ready for our turn. Full of laughter in the halls, supportive hugs, the rush to finish applications and resumes while we daydreamed about flipping tassels and counting the days left on our fingers. The senioritis became the least of our problems when the days became shorter and the news passed longer. As TikTok became the new vine, we would no longer be able to hear the clang of walkers closing. We would no longer walk up and down endless halls. No one would tell us to get to class. On that unprecedented March 16th, no one said it was our last goodbye. The last time our eyes would lock upon each other and not a monitor. No screen can capture memories, but we made them anyway. In isolation, we found our own strength, blossoming through each change thrown our way. The class of future world changers and world leaders, educators, entrepreneurs, doctors, dancers, bakers, biologists, artists, astronauts, essential workers, and everything in between. Who else but us could survive a Chicago winter or a year fated for history? Lightfoot. And I want to congratulate all of our high school graduates on this very special day in your young lives. Now, this moment isn't what any of us expected. As all of you know, you are not just a class of 2020 for your schools. You are the first and only graduating class of Chicago in our city's history. I don't want this to be a speech about 2020. I want this to be the start of a conversation about 2030 and about what you will do with the lessons learned over your life and particularly these last few months and especially the events of late May and early June. Nothing about these past three months has been fair, especially not for you. Not only has your world been turned upside down by a global pandemic, but we've recently experienced the pain and trauma of the murder of George Floyd which has forced us to reckon with the inequality and injustice that very much is a part of our past and lingers in our present. The question is how do we stop it from being part of the future, our future? 
your future. So as you look ahead to the months and years that lay before you, I hope that you will ask yourself, how can I do my part to contribute to a better tomorrow for myself, my family, and my community? President John F. Kennedy famously said, quote, ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. He issued a bold call to action to that generation of Americans to commit themselves to a set of values and actions centered around the public good. Not waiting for someone else to lead, but jumping into the fray to create a better world for all of us. We are standing in the midst of another one of those defining moments. I hope you feel it as I do. But for all that's been taken away, these past few months have forced us to also recognize just how connected we all are. Each challenge presents an opportunity to not just mourn the loss, but to be energized by what we have gained, starting with our connection to each other. Since the start of the COVID-19 crisis, we've been saying we're all in this together. But the meaning and power of this moment is in how it's forced us to recognize that's been true all along. In following the line of this virus from one person to another, from one community to another, or seeing the shared passion and intensity in the response to the murder of George Floyd. What we've also seen is how phrases like what you do matters and what you do counts aren't just lines at all. We are literally connected to each other. And by seeing that what you do matters and what you do counts, we're also forced to ask ourselves, how do you want to matter? And how do you want to count? It's a question you can't escape because it's answered by every single thing you do. And for the first time in your lives as adults, you are now fully responsible to own it. Back when I was running for mayor, I participated in a forum at Whitney Young High School where a senior asked me what I'd be doing to make him want to come back after he was done with college. That was a good question, but now it's time to flip the script. What are you going to do for your city? What are you going to do to make Chicago stronger, more equitable, and more inclusive? One of the things COVID-19 has done over these past few months is shown the incredible service and metal of a city with people stepping up throughout our neighborhoods in big ways and in small. With women like Bridget Marabella from Back of the Yards, who's been helping CPS distribute food, not only does she ensure all the students in her community receive meals every day, but she's been preparing and providing kits for other sites as well. Or men like Jeremy McGrew, who began building ventilators with his mom. And that's on top of his job as an essential city worker, which he's had for seven years. And pastors like John Zehas of Grace and Peace Church, who's been leading a community pantry that's servicing 2,000 local residents, eight senior homes, and an early education center, and recently opened a sister site in Humboldt Park. We saw that service and metal in the righteous, nonviolent protests that arose in a response to George Floyd's murder. And we saw it again when people came together in community-wide efforts to clean up and repair neighborhood businesses that were damaged by looters. So class of 2020, here's my challenge to you, what I'm calling the 2020 pledge. I wanna hear from you about what you want 2030 to look like and what you are personally committed to doing to turn your aspirations into reality. My team and I have even created an email address so you could send me your answers. Mayor2020 at cityofchicago.org. I want to know what your vision is for yourselves and your city and how you plan on getting us there. This school year may not have turned out the way any of us planned, 
but it also transformed this day into one none of us could ever dreamed of. This is a great day for our city because it's filled with hope and promise for our future in ways we are just beginning to comprehend. And you, all of you, made this happen. And all of you, our 2020 class of Chicago, are better equipped and better prepared than anyone to recognize that building a better Chicago in 2030 means starting today, right now, to build a Chicago where our lines of connection are more inclusive and more open to opportunities for all of our residents. I want to congratulate all of you once again for reaching this incredible milestone on your life's journey. I can't wait to hear from you on how you plan to make that journey count. And in return, I promise I'll be there with you every step of the way. Thank you and God bless you. Congratulations, class of 2020. You made it. Wishing nothing but the best for you guys and your pursuit for your dreams. You worked so hard this year to survive the global pandemic, and now you're graduating high school. We know this isn't how you hope to finish your high school career. The Blackhawks and I are so proud of how hard you guys worked. And we wish you nothing but the best as you pursue your future dreams. Just keep grinding, stay encouraged, and I wish you guys much success. Gafford out. I hope you all continue to excel and have a great, great, great graduation. You guys have truly accomplished something incredible, and that's something that you guys should all be proud of. Follow your dreams and never let the idea of failure stay down. We made it. You graduated. Uh, I just wanted to, you know, allow my family. Also, wish you congratulations as well. Congrats, Chicago class of 2020, wishing you all the very best in the future. I want to say congratulations to all of our graduates this year, and good luck. Keep persevering, keep having fun, keep fighting the good fight, and I'll be rooting for you. Good luck. Hi, my name is Philair Carter. I go to Kenwood Academy, and this piece is entitled Sleep. I am one tired male, like a Michelin, did I mention, I gotta excel, spread the sheets on my bed like I'm dividing the sheep, darkest one in my herd, now tell me who finna lead, say the early bird catches the worm, but I slept in, woke up at 5.30, now my breakfast didn't, maybe I can put in effort if I get that bins, and I'll be famous one day, so can I turn this in, she said no more late work, but, it's me though, I even put it in my own words, like Neo, but if you let me pass, I'll come back and I promise I'll pay y'all for student loans and I'll take you shopping she said if I don't put zeros in you never learn a lesson let me tell you why you stressing love going below then you gonna only make three stacks if you put in work I guarantee that you gonna get back everything you put in and not envy your stand on more compared to your friends wake up in five years and be with them brothers you've been blasting in your headphones you're so close to being on so stop sleeping on yourself boy because I ain't got no, got no time to sleep. I may be stupid for the loop, said, but I'm too lazy to dream. You talk about going beyond. I am yawning at the thought. I may be drowsy, don't crowd me, cause my mind is far from gone. My mind is gone, and I'm still very, very tired. 4 30 in the morning, should be in my bed, but I'm more into this pen and composition combination, contemplating to the council. For some type of reassurance, give it all for this rapping. Miss my teenage experience just to give me this Hakuna Matata lifestyle I'm looking for. Got more bags in my eyes than Tori got in store. Imagine you giving your 100 to realize you didn't even scratch the surface. Looking at my nails and you see they're dirty because I've been climbing and climbing Mount Everest. Biking from the Everett to the DT just so I can see my name skip. And I'm beyond tired, pillows got dust on it, but I ain't going to my bed. And I'm sure that I'm the next rapper that everybody adore. I said, I ain't got no, got no time to sleep. I may be stupid for the loop, said, but I'm too lazy to dream. You talk about go when beyond. I am yawning at the thought. I may be drowsy, don't crowd me. My mind is far from gone. My mind is gone. Thank you. Every class has a graduation song. 
We're still waiting on Rihanna to drop that new album, so that's out. And we've all heard Savage by Megan Thee Stallion like a million times by now. I just did a TikTok. You got to check it out. So how about a song written just for the class of 2020 by some of the funniest people in Chicago, the Second City? To dress up in that gown and walk into a triple backflip that make you famous on TikTok. In your heart, you know you'll be fine, but, but it sure be nice to be partying tonight with all the friends you've grown to love. Even that weird guy, Larry from Chemistry Club. Class of 2020, got nothing to lose except half your senior year, but you'll still get through. When you're like, it feels like it moves too fast. Just remember that this too shall pass. Things will feel a little less insane. You can find the light. It ain't all bad. It ain't, it ain't all bad. You know tonight is still your night. It ain't all bad. And one day you're gonna rule the world. Plus, a lot of stuff is better this way. Look, you don't have to inhale the collective BO of 1,000 other high schoolers sitting in the sun sweating. No tendrás que recibir un diploma que eventualmente perderás cuando te mueres. You don't have to go to an after party and watch the popular kids peek and take their final bow. Hey, hey, hey. There'll be other, other parties, there'll be other shows, but you're home with the people you love most. They'll scream your name at the top of their lungs, but won't get kicked out of the auditorium. You might have to celebrate on Super Mafia, where it's easy to tell who your real friends are. And you all deserve to have a ball because you're the class who's gonna save us all. You Congratulations, graduates of 2020. I join my voices to those who admire you and care about you and your future. Graduation day is always a special event in a young person's life and is a source of a lifetime of memories. While you may be tempted to recall these days with some disappointment at being denied the usual celebrations and ceremonies, I predict history will recount how the graduating class of 2020 persevered in the face of great odds and unprecedented hardships. You should not let the disappointment you might feel in this moment eclipse the pride that is rightly yours. For it is a pride shared by me and all those who admire your tenacity and ability to adapt during a crisis. You also should be heartened as you think about the community of your fellow students and families, teachers and civic leaders who stand by you today, who are hopeful about your future. I suspect you will be the first to point out that you have learned countless lessons and arrived at this day because of the many people you consider to be your heroes who helped you cross the finish line. I encourage you to honor your heroes by being a hero for someone someday yourselves. Just thinking about what you have accomplished this past year makes me excited about your future. Count on my remembrance and prayer for you as I ask the Lord to give you the courage to love the life God has given you and embrace the mission that is uniquely yours. I only ask that you say a prayer every so often for me. Stay close to God who lives in you and whose love for you is never ending. He will be there as you take this next step as you graduate. Congratulations again. May God bless you all. Class valedictorian. It's a big deal. Years of hard work and sweating, every single detail lead to that moment you're named first in your class. And typically, you celebrate by giving a speech to your peers. These seven number ones came together to do just that. 
Congratulations to the class of 2020. Congratulations to the class of 2020. Congratulations to the class of 2020. This milestone begins a bright new chapter and the closing of a dedicated journey. Though the situation is not ideal, there is light at the end of the tunnel. Whatever path you may choose, whether it be entering college, enlisting in the military, or heading into the workforce, the light shines within you. You will go to college. You will enlist in the military. You will head into the workforce. You will be the light. You will be the light. You will be the light. We all had our struggles. We all cried and had to overcome challenges. In our final year, we had multiple challenging encounters. The strike. The coronavirus. And in spite of the unprecedented circumstances we each had in our schools. We, we did, did it. We finished the year victorious. What well, other class can say they did all of this while being in quarantine? For many of us, school was an escape. When we were questioning how things were unfolding in our senior year, we had the support of one another. I am truly proud of your strength and compassion as my classmates. When our hearts shattered into a million pieces, I am proud of you for having the courage to wake up and attend school. Whether it was from your bedroom, living room, or basement, the halls held vivid memories for many of us, and I am proud of my peers for accepting the hurtful reality that we may never walk through them again. I am proud of the class of 2020. I am proud of the class of 2020. I am proud of the class of 2020 because despite not being able to be together, we are still united and continue to move forward towards a brighter future. In times of political uncertainty, we remain certain in our beliefs that a better tomorrow is possible. We have demanded change through protests, sit-ins, and peace rallies. We created an impact with our voice. We did all of this while maintaining rigorous course loads, working part-time jobs, applying to colleges, preparing for and showing the generation behind us what is possible when you place compassion at the center of everything that you do. We made it look easy. We made it look easy. We made it look easy. We are young, powerful, and ready to shift the status quo. I am proud that we will go down in history as leaders, fearlessly taking a stand for what matters most, all of us. I am proud of the class of 2020. I am proud of the class of 2020. I am proud of the class of 2020 because despite missing out on special events like prom and graduation, we have found creative ways to celebrate and own our moments. Driving through graduation parades, receiving gifts of appreciation, participating in virtual decision day activities, even quarantine kickbacks in place of prom. Our celebratory moments are one of a kind. Together we have shown how powerful compassion can be. It has been an important part of our experience. As we move into the next phase of our lives, think about who has shaped you to be who you are today. People who have seen us at our worst and, and at our best. best. People who have influenced our experiences and futures to our parents teachers coaches school counselors thank you thank you thank you for your sacrifice and support if there is anything we should be proud of it is that we are giants in the bodies of teenagers with not even the sky as our limit. the class of 2020 is different the class of 2020 is resilient we are proud we are proud we are proud we are first generation students we are activists we are our culture we, we are, are dreamers. dreamers we are a reflection of our actions we are unreal Relenting lifelong learners. We are a part of history. We are our tomorrow. We are our tomorrow. We are our tomorrow. We are our tomorrow.
from Norwood Park, Chicago. I'm from Wrigleyville. West Side. I'm from Old Irving Park. I'm from the south side of Chicago. I live in Streeterville. I live by the Roseland West Pullman area. I am from Brighton Park. I was born and raised in Edison Park uh, on the northwest side of Chicago. I'm from the Dunning neighborhood. Back of the yards. Belmont Cragen. West side of Chicago, North Lundale community. I was born and raised in Chicago. A kid from Chicago, that's a whole different kid. <laughs> like, we're strong, we're competitive for sure. Sports, we learn to, again, adapt to different things. I think the experience is different depending on where you live, which is one of the sad but true parts of the city. If you are born and raised in Chicago, I wanna tell you, you're right now, you're a fighter and you're strong and you're amazing <laughs> because it's hard. A lot of people grew up in tough situations, you know, including myself. So to be able to beat the odds, it actually, you know, grows me as a person for the better. To be Chicago proud, it, it honestly means a lot to me. I'm honored because it's a really unique city. It's cool to say that I'm part of Chicago. Chicago is just, it's big, but it doesn't seem big after a while. It feels like you have your own community and it's another home here. I feel a sense of pride from, from being from Inglewood. I wouldn't change where I'm from. I'm proud to be from Chicago. Yeah, I think it is a type of pride with being from Chicago. I don't think you can get anything from anywhere else but Chicago. We just come in with the chip on our shoulder, like we that. It's been definitely something like shaping the way I am. It's like a big like mixing pot and stuff like that, which is a good thing because you get to be exposed to a lot of different things and you get to meet a lot of different people because it is so diverse. Being here in Chicago gives me the ability to be able to interact with multiple people that have different stories and different perspectives that I can learn from. But Chicago has heart, Chicago has soul. Chicago has legacy, so being from Chicago means that you have the backs of your people. Even if you look at Chance the Rapper or Kanye, they are very proud to be in Chicago, so I definitely believe that Chicago gives you more of a story. It's been 25 years, almost to the day, since I was where you are now. I spent my four years of high school here at Hyde Park Career Academy, and I hold the memories of that time close to my heart. Yes, I remember graduation, but my memories of high school are so much more than the day I was handed my diploma. I remember how I asked for the same locker every year because I felt it brought me good luck. And I remember Miss Murray, the teacher who made me believe I could do and be anything that I wanted. Now to the class of 2020, I know this is not the graduation you imagine, and I don't want to diminish your loss. It's okay to feel disappointed that you are not celebrating with your class in the same room. But I also want you to remember that high school is a collection of moments you'll carry with you forever, and nothing, not even a global pandemic, can take that away. What impresses me most about the class of 2020 is that you never gave up. Even in these very challenging circumstances, you kept up with your classes and made up in your minds that you were gonna finish high school strong. That kind of perseverance and that ability to dig deep and find strength, even when times are tough, will take you a long way in life, no matter what pathway you choose. There's a stereotype in our society about the younger generation. It's a feeling that you've been indulged, coddled, and that adults are so busy trying to eliminate your stress that we've made you unprepared to cope when hard times inevitably come. I hope that the era of COVID-19 puts an end to this kind of thinking. The endurance, tenacity, and grit that you have shown since the beginning of this crisis proves that your generation can do much more than cope. It shows that you can thrive in the face of hardship and that you have it in you to emerge from a crisis stronger and more focused than you were before. Years from now, when you think back on this time in your lives, I believe you will remember what you learned rather than what you lost. I believe you will feel proud of how resilient you were during a time of crisis. I believe you'll have great memories of a unique time spent at home with family and that you will recall with pride the way Chicagoans, Americans, and people all across the globe came together to support each other. No other graduating class will be able to say that. 
It's true that this day is all about you, but let's not forget the long list of people who helped you get here. Before you close this chapter of high school for good, I hope you'll find time to thank the adults and friends who challenged you, supported you, and encouraged you throughout these past four years. I'm talking about your best friends and teammates, as well as the teachers, coaches, principals, and counselors, all who contributed to your success. And of course, your parents and family members who helped to shape the amazing young adults you have become. More than ever in these times of social distancing, we must all make sure that our loved ones feel appreciated and loved. As CEO of our district, it's been my privilege to watch you grow. As scholars, of course, but also as athletes, artists, leaders, and caring and compassionate people. You are truly the pride of Chicago Public Schools, and I wish you success and happiness in everything that you do. attending the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. The University of Wisconsin-Madison. Northwestern University. Gallaudet at University. The University of Michigan. Western Illinois University. And I'll be majoring in urban planning, computer science, journalism, engineering, political science. I want to do basketball. Play baseball. I decided to enlist in the military. I want to be a nurse. I want to be a millionaire. I want my money to outlive me. I have money for future generations. Some of my family members are artists, and I would like to carry that um, legacy with me. My name is Marche Bradley, and I might be you guys next president. <laughs> I want to be an urban planner, and I hope to help make an equal space for all communities. I want to be able to grow as a computer scientist, also be able to encourage other women to be able to join the field. I decided to do a double major. I'm going to be an archery and also an accountant. Most definitely, I want to start my own organization to just build awareness to males to really feel comfortable with who they are and the skin they were born in. I'm a state champion, city champion, and I'm on my way with a full ride to Howard University. I done came from the bottom, I just want to be at the top. I want to be a nurse, uh, specifically a neonatal nurse, because they're able to have like this emotional connection with patients at the same time as they're using knowledge to be able to take care of them. I want to be a police officer, so I'm going into like, the law enforcement program. I work at an internship called Alpha Lore, which is helping with people with who are mentally challenged. At first, I wasn't thinking about being a person who would teach music until I got more into it through my senior year. If it's not teach music, it would also perform in music. I'm going to Northern Illinois University to play baseball. I'm going to study secondary education. I want to be a high school English teacher. I want to be somebody who continues to make change in her community, who never gives up the good fight. You know you made it when people refer to you by a single name. We have our fair share of those here in Chicago. Kanye, Chance, Common. Let's hear from another legend everyone knows by a single name. Oprah. Hello, Chicago graduates. I love, love, love the city I call home for more than a quarter century. You know, I lived in the heart of downtown at 180 East Pearson. I worked for years on State Street. And then I built a studio on Randolph and Carpenter. I not only created a show and affirmed my calling here, I built a life here. So it's with a true sense of honor that I speak to you today to celebrate your hard-won diplomas. I hope you've released the disappointment of not having the ceremony you had imagined all these years, the processional, the caps and gowns, your family and friends cheering you on. I assure you, their love and support are the same, even if the pomp and circumstances are not. Your graduation is taking place during a watershed moment in our country's history, against the backdrop of a global pandemic that has caused more than 2,200 deaths in Chicago alone. And we're seeing these deaths occurring disproportionately in black and brown communities. We're also seeing clearly an even deadlier disease the disease of systemic inequality and deeply rooted racism. I remember back in the summer of 1967 when black people across America rose up in protest against police brutality, unemployment, and housing discrimination. I was 13 years old, living on welfare in Milwaukee with my mother and two siblings, and I remember people taking to the streets. The National Guard was brought in. I had no understanding at the time of the profound war being waged 
fueled by despair and the basic human wish for a better life. Not only is this a different time, but I believe this time things can be different. At this moment of protest and dissent, whether we choose to march in the streets or not, we are each being called to reckon with our country's past and determine a more equitable future for black and brown people, for poor and disenfranchised people, called to insist that our nation lives up to its ideals and comes to terms with all the ways racism has been written into our laws, embedded in our institutions, imprinted on our culture. Y'all are never going to forget this year. The year you graduated and we were locked in our homes for months, distancing ourselves from one another to save lives. It's also the year the world bore witness to a life being taken, George Floyd's life taken in plain view. We bore witness thanks to a video that echoed around the globe, recorded by a 17-year-old who dared to keep filming. This is the calling for you, class of 2020, the call to courage and tenacity. The lesson is right there in front of you. Don't give up on the truth. It's worth fighting for. I understand the inclination to despair, the awful sense of intractability of oppression, because we know that the knee on George Floyd's neck is no different from the noose weaponized to terrorize black communities for decades, and no different from the chains used to enslave black Americans for centuries. George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, and the countless unarmed black people murdered by police. Their deaths are the direct result of our inability to confront our country's history of racial injustice. So, I also have the hope that this moment will prove to be the one that finally ushers in reform and transformation. Chicago, together with all the cities around the country in which hundreds of thousands of people have come together in protest, joins a long tradition of organizing for social justice, of struggling for equal rights, and declaring that black lives do indeed matter. I'm hopeful because for the first time in recent memory, we as a nation are being forced to confront the legacy of slavery and its stain on our society's very soul. And I'm hopeful because you, your generation, saw that knee on the neck and not only knew how wrong and vile it was, you took to the streets to stand up and proclaim it so. At the same time that you're graduating, though, from high school, you're also stepping into adulthood, a passage that I'm sure many of you have anticipated with joy, with excitement, with uncertainty, maybe even a tiny bit of fear. What does it mean to be an adult? It means to take responsibility for who you are and how you choose to show up with your talents. Will you use them in service to your highest good? What will your essential service be? The next few years are about figuring that out, and each of you in your own time will come to answer those questions. You need not know today what you want to spend your life doing. Let each phase of your life and the climb fill you with new insights and appreciation for wherever you are in the moment. And when you don't know what to do, give. Give and you will receive. Give your talent. Give your energy. And when you make enough money to spare, give your money. My poet friend Mark Nepo says, the mystery is that whoever shows up when we dare to give has exactly what we need hidden in their trouble. There's one more great responsibility of adulthood that starts when you turn 18. Using your voice, by which I mean your vote to affect change. It's important to vote in the national election, of course, but equally critical to cast your ballot locally, to stay engaged and hold your city leaders accountable because their decisions directly affect your day-to-day -day life. Your mayor, your judges, your district attorney, that's the person who determines who gets prosecuted, who stands trial. You live in one of the greatest cities in the world. Its leadership cares about all people, and I'm hoping that you use your education, your skills, and your talents to build on the incredible work that's already happening in Chicago with organizations like Westside United, the Moffa Redemption Project, My Block, My Hood, My City, Live Healthy Chicago. There will never be a shortage of need for your service, so pick a problem, any problem. The list is long. We need your commitment. And my hope is that this time of reckoning, a time that will be forever marked by the coronavirus pandemic and the plague of racial inequity, will propel you to the path of real justice for all. Show up for the people who've shown up for you. Find your cause and fight for it. You'll make mistakes, but you'll learn from them. 
and one small shimmering act of goodness and gratitude at a time, you will make this city, this planet, a better place to be. Congratulations, class of 2020. Continue to dream big, advocate for your community, and be the change you want to see. Congratulations to the class of 2020. Woo! Go forth and show the world what you made of. Woo! I always have a sign on my door that says, leave as a better person. So I hope that you all leave as a better person and make a positive impact in the community. Para mis seniors de Clase 2020, felicidades. Keep creating, keep dreaming, keep using your voices for good. I cannot wait to see where your story goes next. Congratulations! Keep soaring higher. All the best to you on this journey ahead, and just know we are so deeply proud of you. We love you. Go out there and change the world. This is Jamal Cole. I'm the founder of My Block, My Hood, My City. I want to say huge congratulations to the class of 2020, man. I hope y'all staying safe right now. I want to tell y'all a quick story, right, about two salesmen, right? Two salesmen in the city of Chicago. One salesman looks outside, he says, man, he said, it's raining real bad right now. With weather like this, the boss can't expect me to go outside and make sales. He stay home. There's another salesman in the same city, man. He look outside, he say, dang, it's raining real bad right now. You know what, weather like this, what a great day to go outside and make sales. Everybody gonna be home, especially the salespeople. Now, what does this mean? Y'all going through a pandemic right now. Some high school students, they gonna look outside and say, man, the city messed up, there's a pandemic going on. I can't have my football games, I can't have my basketball games, I can't even go to school. They're not gonna apply to college. Some high school students gonna look outside and say, man, the city messed up right now, it's a pandemic. They done shut down my football games, shut down my basketball games, I can't even go to school. But they still going to apply to go to college, man. See, it's your perspective on how things work out for y'all. Listen, I want y'all to, to change your perspective and change the world and make sure y'all being safe right now. The way you stay safe in Chicago is setting goals. I'm talking about big goals too, goals as big as John Johnson with Ebony Jet Magazine. We're at the top of his building right now. I want y'all to set big goals. If you walk outside today and you see somebody, you say, hey, yo, how you doing? They say, oh, man, I'm just maintaining. Run! You don't want to be next to nobody that's just maintaining. I can't stand those thank God it's Friday people. You say, hey, hey how you doing, man? Oh, I'm just trying to stay out the way. Run! You don't want to be next to nobody that's trying to stay out the way. You want to be next to somebody with big goals. Once you get clear about your goals, the universe brings it to you. I want y'all to find your purpose because that'll pull you through a pandemic. Congratulations to the class of 20. I'm pumped up, man. Class of 2020, man. If you can make it in Chicago, you can make it anywhere in the world. And everybody know that, man. Peace. graduates from all the schools in Chicago. My name is Common, and I want to say God bless you. Congratulations. You all have accomplished something that no other class in the history of America, in the history of Chicago, in the history of anywhere have accomplished. You all have accomplished graduation and made it to your graduation to get your diplomas in a time when the world has never seen anything like this. You all will always be remembered as history makers at a, at a time in history where things were changing. And now that you have your diplomas, you've earned and accomplished everything you have. I want to remind you of the power you have. I want to remind you of the strength you have. I want to remind you of the discipline you've shown and the lights you have to give to this world. Y'all from Chicago, you got it. But along with that, you all have achieved things at certain levels and put your minds towards things that many people have not been able to overcome and rise above. But you have class of 2020. So I want you to go out in this world, go out there with purpose, go out there with truth, 
go out there with the love that you exude and that you put into your craft and into academics, into yourself and into your community and spread that to the world as proud Chicagoans, as proud people of our city, as proud human beings and proud children of God. Go do it, Chicago. Go do it, class of 2020. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. I'm inspired by y'all. I value you. You all are the light and the change that we need in this world. Class of 2020, congratulations. Thanks to everyone for watching today. To the class of 2020, congratulations. Best of luck to you in your next chapter. Remember, history has its eyes on you. Be safe. Enjoy it. Now let's celebrate. say thank you to my passionate teachers and my dad for pushing me along the way. I wanted to take this time to give my mom and my teachers a special shout out for helping me to get through any obstacle that I had in my high school career. You all are greatly appreciated and I thank you for contributing to my success. We try our best even though we didn't get what we were expected. I want to thank everyone who's helped me along the way. And I owe my greatest thank you to my family. My family, my parents, and everybody that's helped me. Without them, I wouldn't be where I am today. For pushing me to do better. Who pushed me to never give up. For cultivating my curiosity and pushing me beyond the limits of what I thought I could achieve. For making college accessible for me and my peers. For giving me so many opportunities. For always believing in me and giving me the strength to move on even when I felt like giving up. And for pushing me to become the best version of myself. Thanks to you guys, I found my passion in life and I will be forever grateful. Thanks guys. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, we appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you and love you so much. I love you guys. Love you class of 2020. Class of 2020, we made it. Thanks for watching. To the class. Graduation 2020, the after party. This year is probably going to go down in history as one of the craziest years. Advice and hope for the future. Right now, I'm just looking forward to a better tomorrow for me and my family. I've always just wanted to keep pushing, no matter how difficult. Turning a missed milestone into a chance to look toward new horizons. A special message from former President Barack Obama and lots of fun along the way. Graduates making a difference in their communities and making ABC7 Chicago proud. As we celebrate the class of 2020. Here are Cheryl Burton and Jose Sanders. Hey everybody, the after party in Chicago is here. Welcome, we're so glad. We wanna recognize the accomplishments the tenacity and the resilience of the class of 2020. These are students who are making a difference despite a year of challenges from a teacher strike to a global pandemic and civil unrest. But today we celebrate you. So to kick things off, well, some of our friends here at ABC7, they want to say hello. Hey, everybody. Hey, guys. Yay. We are so excited to have you here to send well wishes to the Chicago graduates in true ABC7 style. Thank you for standing up for others. Now go and make this world a better place.
go out, reach for the dreams. Congratulations to everybody. What you have accomplished under this set of circumstances is truly commendable. We are all so proud of you and truly the best is yet to come. We're weathering this storm together, but we are behind you. And I know you have brighter, sunnier days ahead. As you go forward and conquer, listen to your heart and your mind and continue to do great things. You've shown that you can do great things all through your lives. I can't wait to see what your next chapters are. May your days be sunny and your storms be few. Wishing you big congratulations. I want you to go out there and set big goals for yourself. Go out there and make a big change in the world. You can do it. You've gotten through all of this. Wishing you all a ton of success. You did something remarkable in a time where we all needed a little bit of hope. As you go forward, let your heart be your guide and your mind be your best tool. Through this crazy year, you did it. You have accomplished something truly incredible. You have persevered through so much this year, and we cannot wait to see what you do. Go out and make the world a much better place. You are sure to do great things. It will get better, and it will be because of you. Class of 2020, congratulations. From everybody at ABC7, we are so looking forward to seeing what you do next. Well, moments ago, Chicago wrapped up its first ever citywide virtual graduation. Our Terrell Brown is live with Mayor Lori Lightfoot following a star-studded celebration of this year's achievements. Terrell. Hey, Jose, here with the mayor out at City Hall. Socially distanced, of course. <laughs> Madam Mayor, how are you? I'm good. good. I'm good. I'm just so full of pride um, watching that virtual graduation, and I was uh, fortunate enough to watch it with um, a number of students uh, and their families. Some of the students were actually part of the, uh, uh, the program, and I, my heart is just full of pride for our students. It was awesome. You know, this world, Mayor, is changing by the day. Yes. Where does the class of 2020 fit in all of this change? You know, there's a, a line in the, the kind of virtual valedictorian um, speech where one of the speakers said, we're um, giants in the bodies of teenagers. And that's so true. I mean, these young people have persevered through really difficult odds and are succeeding and thriving. They have all the tools that they need to really set us on a better path. And I issued my uh, 2030 pledge um, to uh, this class. I want to hear from them about how they are going to chart their futures to really build on the experiences that they've had up to this point and particularly what they've seen and taken in and participated in over these last few weeks. I have great, great hopes uh, for this class. I think they're going to really um, steer this city in the right direction and, and lead us to break down issues of systemic racism um, because they are impediments in our past and our present, but there's no reason why they need to be in the future. But a lot of that depends upon our young people. They've got to lead us, and I'm confident that they will. Based on your life and your story, mm -hmm. what is the one thing you want the class of 2020 to remember you saying here today? Never give up. Always chart your own course. There's so many people who are negative and want to tell you what you can't do. I want them to stay focused and really follow their passion and their dream. You know, we all think about when we're a little bit older, if I had to do it over again and I knew now what I knew then uh, uh, as a teenager, I just want to tell them, lean into your passion. You know, life is long. Um, pursue your dreams and never, never let anybody tell you what you can't do. Use that as fuel to prove them wrong. The words of Mayor Lori Lightfoot. Mayor, appreciate your time. My Thank pleasure. you so much. Thank you. Uh, Cheryl Jose, going to send it back inside to you. All right. Thanks, Terrell. Thanks, Mayor. The class of 2020 has taken this time of uncertainty in stride, finishing the school year online instead of on stage in a cap and gown. But students all over Chicago say this has only made them more prepared for the future. We're an extremely interesting class. We were born immediately after 9-11, and now we have to deal with COVID the year of our high school graduation. And I think on the one hand, that adversity has really put us in a tough position. We've missed things like senior prom, spring sports, things like that. On the other hand, that adversity is going to set us up to succeed later in life. I, don't know, I feel ready to take on the world. I just want to do so much to help. 
I just really want to go forth and just be successful. I'm feeling like it's such a relief to finally graduate. It just feels like, yay, but like with no, no one to celebrate with. It's gonna turn out great. Just keep going and believe in yourself and have a good support system on your side. Out of everything that's going on, I kept pushing and pushing and pushing. I'm very proud of all my friends. I'm proud of everybody I've met. I love them. I'm ready to start my next uh, chapter in life. I'm ready to take on college and learn more about uh, the college life. I think it's gonna be a really cool experience to meet a whole bunch of different people and try and see what I want to do with the rest of my life. I'll be able to make my own decisions and suffer my own consequences. And I'll just be able to do what I want, when I want, and how I want to do it. My family members keep saying, oh, you can't, you gonna, you gonna see when it comes to being an adult, all this. I really want to experience it. I know it's going to be hard, but I got to stick through it. You got a whole generation of kids going through something pretty impactful. I, I'd really just look forward to see where we grow from this. Do something that you're really passionate about during these times, during the future, and you will get yourself over no matter what obstacle you may come. Being the one class that has experienced this, it will give us something to go on, you know, something, something that we can look back on, something that we can learn from. We're trailblazers. Absolutely, such powerful words. Now the graduates all across the city showing incredible maturity and optimism in the face of so much change and challenge. And former President Barack Obama is echoing those messages of hope in a very special video for the class of 2020 right here in his hometown of Chicago. Graduation is a big achievement under any circumstances. Yours comes as the world is turned upside down. The thing is, class of 2020, what these past few weeks have also shown us is that the challenges we face go well beyond a virus and that the old normal wasn't good enough. It wasn't working that well. In a lot of ways, the pandemic just brought into focus problems that have been growing for a very long time, whether it's widening economic inequality, the lack of basic health care for millions of people, the continuing scourge of bigotry and sexism, or the divisions and dysfunction that plague our political system. Similarly, the protests in response to the killing of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor and Ahmaud Arbery and Nina Pop aren't simply a reaction to those particular tragedies, as heartbreaking as they are. They speak to decades worth of anguish and frustration over unequal treatment and a failure to reform police practices and the broader criminal justice system. So, as scary and uncertain as these times may be, they are also a wake-up call, and they're an incredible opportunity for your generation. Because you don't have to accept what was considered normal before. You don't have to accept the world as it is. You can make it into the world as it should be and could be. You can create a new normal, one that is fairer and gives everybody opportunity and treats everyone equally and builds bridges between people instead of dividing them. But as has always been true at key moments in history, it's gonna depend on young people like you to go out there and rewrite what is possible. To see so many of you participating in peaceful protests, to see so many of you of every race and background raise up your voices on behalf of justice for all, well, it's been unbelievably inspiring. You make me optimistic about our future. America changed, has always changed, because young people dared to hope. You don't always need hope when everything's going fine. It's when things seem darkest. That's when you need it the most. You know, someone once said, hope is not a lottery ticket. It's a hammer for us to use in a national emergency, to break the glass, sound the alarm, and sprint into action. And if your generation sprints into action, it will still be true of America's future. Congratulations, class of 2020. Make it mean something and keep making us proud. Well, we are Chicago proud of all our students, and this celebration is just getting started. Well, straight ahead, everybody, we are going one-on-one -on -one with Hamilton star Miguel Cervantes, a true example for the graduates of turning adversity and opportunity. Plus... Come on. 
you won't want to miss this virtual performance by the Soul Children of Chicago. One of Chicago's graduates is this native Southsider with a passion for writing. It is a talent she's been sharing with others for more than a decade. Jalen Henderson has her story. Who is she, Lila wondered. From a young age, Idea Ricketts knew she wanted to inspire others. I just loved writing and I decided to take all my ideas to paper. Those ideas soon became pages. And by the age of seven, Idea had already published her first book. I was like, I wonder if I could write my own book being a kid and inspire other kids to do the same. 10 years and three books later, Idea's graduating high school in what's probably the most unpredictable year yet. March was just like gonna be a really fun month for me. I had so many college visits lined up. Literally just like all of that was like gone out the window. First, students stayed home because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Spring break, prom, and graduation were either canceled or postponed. Instead, citywide protest against police brutality. It shifted just the whole tone and mood of those two weeks where those big events would have been happening, but I think it was a shift that we needed so we could really see how many lives have been taken and how many lives need justice. Here at the Latin School of Chicago, Idea danced, played softball, and wrote for the school newspaper. And when she attends the University of Pennsylvania in the fall, she'll be a health and society major on the pre-med track. Until it's time for the next chapter of her life to start, Idea will spend her summer as an online teacher's assistant for the High Jump program. Because just like her character, Lila Light, Idea is committed to serving her community, especially when reading's involved. Hey, I did it. I used my imagination. From a student author to a Broadway star who's using his voice to inspire others, both on and off stage. Our Tanya Babbage spoke with Hamilton's Miguel Cervantes, who knows firsthand how to use life's most painful moments to grow stronger. No justice, no peace. Today's march is tomorrow's civil rights lesson. As they say in uh, Hamilton, you know, history has its eyes on them specifically because if change is coming, they're the ones that are going to have to. To, to make it. Graduation 2020 MC and Hamilton star Miguel Cervantes has faced more than his share of adversity. In October, Miguel, his wife Kelly, and son Jackson said a painful goodbye to the couple's daughter Adelaide, who died after a long battle with epilepsy. I understand very clearly how easy it is to um, be sort of consumed by sadness and anger over. Um, kind of things that are you know, very much out of our control. And yet Miguel has channeled his grief into art. While his family pushes through pain with its advocacy. You take this sort of ball of terrible and sort of 
transform it into something that can give you drive and purpose. And that's what I did every night on stage. The CIBC Theater hosted tens of thousands of students during Hamilton Chicago's run. And Miguel says he saw history clicking in a way that it hadn't previously. Well, now the students are having their own revolutionary moment. All of these young people have this unbelievable, you know, amount of inspiration and and whether it be this sort of social unrest that can spark change whether it's you know this sort of isolation that we've all been feeling that sparks creativity and now we're putting them out into the world and I would say use this. Each day is an opportunity to create something beautiful either because or in spite of what you had to overcome. Tanya, thanks so much for that. Now, we are back with more of our after party right after this. But first, everybody, some of Chicago's first generation graduates sharing why this moment means so much. My parents came here to the United States to be able to provide my sisters and I with a better life. Our family moved here when I was in elementary school. My parents, my aunts, my uncles, my grandparents, they had to go through so much more. I am going to be the first person in my family to go to college. I am one of the first person from my family to attend college. Going to college and being a good example and being here even is a very great accomplishment for me and my family. Well, he is about to attend one of the best schools in the country on a full ride scholarship. But one Southwest Side graduate is already planning his return to the community that raised him so he can give back. Yikari Nakayami has that story. Every week, Arturo Ballesteros <laughs> looks forward to Sunday. On Sundays, it's more carefree. Um, there's not as much responsibilities that we need to worry about, and we can just spend it together. Ballesteros receiving a full ride to the University of Chicago. At first I was like, I couldn't, I was kind of like, is this really happening? Like, is this a dream kind of a thing? Ballesteros says college has always been on his mind. Education is the most important thing a person can have, because without it, you are nobody. You need to have a career to excel, especially in this country. Rosa and Juan Ballesteros both work at El Popocatepetl Tortilleria, six days a week. That work ethic adopted by the teen. Arturo had several choices of high schools to attend. He chose Back of the Yards College Prep because he says he saw something special here. I know that I'm not just receiving an education. I'm developing friendships that are going to last me well beyond high school. The high school graduate will be majoring in Latin studies and enter education so that he can come back and give to a place that he says gave him so much. I want to go back and make a positive difference in the same low-income and under-resourced communities that I come from. Thanks so much for that. Now, one very special graduate in the class of 2020 is the first recipient of a scholarship that I created at my CPS alma mater. Her family recorded her reaction to the surprise announcement.
I want to send abundant congratulations, many blessings, and a whole lot of love to Jewel Baker. <laughs> Joel Baker is the inaugural recipient of the Cheryl Burton Scholarship at Lindblom Math and Science Academy in Inglewood. She is the first of her siblings to go to college and she is now headed to Columbia College to study film and television with a minor in photography. In high school, she studied Arabic, worked as a tutor helping other students, and she even created her very own TV pilot. And now she has dreams of becoming a movie director. I am so proud of you, Jewel. You are an original, and I'm so honored to celebrate you. Congratulations, Jewel. Oh, that is so cool. Yeah. Thank you for that, Cheryl. We'll be back with more inspiring stories from local graduates right after this. You know, graduating at the top of your class is already a major accomplishment, but this Chicago teenager just did so after refusing to let anything get in the way of her reaching her goals. Who would have thought I would be beginning a valedictorian speech? Who, indeed. But Eileen Limon did it. Top of her class at Our Lady of Tepeyac School in Little Village. You don't really see a lot of valedictorians who are autistic much less the minorities. Eileen was diagnosed with autism at the age of four. I wasn't really able to talk. My vocabulary was that of an eight-month-old baby, and it was really hard to socialize with other people. It took years of hard work and a whole village of support, but the shy little girl eventually found her voice and her purpose. You think differently than other people, and that's okay. And sometimes, you know, we might have a harder time with certain things like communicating with others, but that's okay because, you know, we can overcome many things, you know, it just might take us a little longer. And now Eileen is more than just okay. Because of the pandemic, she proudly delivered her valedictory speech in the school's parking lot. Congratulations to class of 2020. And we can tell you Eileen is now gearing up for college where she plans to study engineering or psychology. She says she just wants to help other people. Great Cheryl? job. Now the COVID-19 pandemic has another top ranking Chicago graduate stepping into a new role and she is helping strangers cope with tragedy. Jesse Kirsch has her story. We pretty much never take no for an answer. Brianna Pickett is on the front lines of the COVID-19 pandemic helping grieving families make sense of immense loss at her family's West Side funeral business. A person that can give them ease. Her father, Brian Pickett, says people find relief in his daughter's calmness. Brianna's energy and just her words of encouragement just turned the whole situation around. That passion also driving her to a salutatorian high school finish. I've never wanted to get half and I can give my whole. At Providence St. Mel School, she was senior class president and a member of the National Honor Society. She plans to attend Howard University this fall with dreams of becoming a forensic pathologist. During this global pandemic, Pickett rising to the occasion as class president too. Pickett helped find a new way to still celebrate her classmates. Hello. 
she has just such a strong like confidence in who she is. Scholar, leader, dreamer. And in newly trying times, a young black woman striving to be defined by her goals alone. Just keep, you know, pushing yourself, keep proving them wrong, and just be yourself at the end of the day. Amazing advice from one of our phenomenal graduates and to the entire class of 2020 here in Chicago and beyond. We wish you abundant congratulations. We are so proud of you and we cannot wait to see what you do next. We leave you with the powerful sounds of Dr. Walt Whitman and the Soul Children of Chicago, whose voices have been uplifting our city for decades. We, the Soul Children of Chicago, come to celebrate with you life, love, and a pursuit of happiness. So with one sound and with one voice, we come to let everybody know, no matter what the problem, I'm going to live different.